Hello guys, welcome to my new video and in this video I am going to tell you some things about Tiger Shack processor architecture. But before moving to that, I want to just give a brief, brief introduction on what Tiger Shark processors are and uh, why they are made and what they are special what are the specialities of that uh, of the, that processor. So Tiger Shark processor is uh, is manufactured by analog devices and uh, it is uh, widely used for telecommunication applications like mobile base station. It is designed for to perform multiple processor multi processing applications which involve large amount of signal processing. So uh, it it can execute one to two one to four thirty two bit instructions simultaneously, and it is possible to generate a single line instruction. It is capable of supporting sing, single instruction multiple data operation. And it supports both fixed point and floating point format with 8, 16, or 32 bits. So now let's look at the architecture. So this is this is the architecture for the processor. Now first look at we will look at the computational unit. So computational unit has a 32 bit register file, uh, which can be used to store temporary data. It has a ALU. Uh, arithmetic logical unit has one multiplier and a shifter. So uh, the computational unit makes use of 32 or 64 bit input. So and it can handle both fixed point and floating point data. So when the input is 64 bit, it uses two 32 bit register files and uh, it takes the 64 bit input and it processes that that input. Next, if you are uh, if you want to use 8 bits from the register file so you can use uh, 4 you can divide the 32 bit register into 4 parts so you can use 8 bits from that then uh, each computational unit has a register file having 32 bit data so each each register file is 32 bits so that that's i have discussed so that's that's it for the computational unit it does computation in this part there are two computational units in the processor next we will look at the address generators so there are there are two address generators again it has a 32 bit register file and one arithmetic logical unit it is also called data address generators and uh, it does calculation of address of the data and according to accordingly the data is transferred to the computational unit the address generators have an optional bit reverse capability. So, if you're using a fast Fourier transform algorithm, this bit reversal is required. So, that's it for the address generators. Now, let's move on to program control unit, which is here. Program control unit is also called as program sequencer. So, there are basically five functions. Uh, which uh, this unit performs. So first is it generate addresses for the instruction. So we have seen that address generators are used for generating addresses for the data. But program control unit is used for generating addresses for the instructions. Next, it provides flexible control for the program flow. So there is a flexibility in the flow. So it makes the work easy for the execution. Next, it, it gives sophisticated internal processing if there is some interrupt it, it gives the a way to manage that interrupt next there are uh, the conditional as well as under unconditional zero overhead looping is provided so uh, oh, zero overhead looping means there if, if there is a loop then uh, no separate clock is required to count the number of iterations so if you give a loop for seven uh, iterations so it will execute for seven times and there is no need for to count no need to uh, <coughs> set a counter and uh, to have a clock for that so, so that's a main advantage for, for the program control unit and finally uh, conditional as well as, as well as un unconditional single cycle branching is also provided so that's what program control unit does so there is this only single cycle branching there is also an instruction buffer where the instructions are saved and uh, accordingly they, those instructions are executed. And 
finally there is a branch target buffer and uh, it is uh, it is used to store the addresses of previously executed instructions so it makes uh, the task bit easy and it re reduces the delay so if, if it knows what task is been done previously and the same task is is again coming so it it will uh, not waste the time in generating the addresses it will directly uh, look into the branch target buffer and it will execute and finally we have a dma controller which is here it has three blocks one block is for code and two blocks are for data the operation of dma controller is invisible to the processor so dma means direct Act memory access so it can, it can directly access the memory one block is used for code and two are for data so it has 14 dma channels so that that's it for the the architecture you have this uh, 120 bit 128 bit instructions 128 bit for data as well so that that's it for the shark architecture thanks for watching guys and uh, to subscribe.